so far against congressional testimony. New scene. If the decision has been made that he will testify. While he is testifying, he's asked, Mr. Former Special Prosecutor, in the absence of the directive from the Department of Justice and the, and the, the rules that say you couldn't prosecute, in the absence of that, would you have prosecuted Donald Trump for obstruction of justice? Can they ask him that and compel they him to answer? They can ask him that. There is not a universe in which this special counsel, Robert Mueller, would answer that question. He's going to say it's a hypothetical and he's not going to answer it. I think what he's doing here is putting the focus. It doesn't matter what his answer is. It matters what the congressional answer is. He said, here are the facts. If you want to know the facts, what the president did, I've laid them out. You, Congress, now need to make a determination of whether that's a high crime and a misdemeanor. And he's not going to give folks the easy way out. I don't think the special counsel is ever going to answer that hypothetical. Because as he put it, that's not how this works in America. There's a system. That's right. There's a, you know, we have a constitution. It says that when there's a president who's been accused of misconduct, that goes through Congress. That doesn't mean there has to be impeachment. He doesn't have to get kicked out of office. But when they open an impeachment inquiry, I think there are very different things that could happen. Could he testify as part of an impeachment inquiry? That's possible. That's a different question. Um, but I think until that happens, you're not going to see any movement from Robert Mueller or anybody else on his team. You said here after the release of the Mueller report that those 10, some say 11, depends on how you look at it, instances of obstruction of justice are evidence of a crime. If Absolutely. That, and if, given that, if the Congress then is not able to come up with a process for impeachment, are we now left in a position where a, a, president, a future president of the United States will, can have committed crimes, and if the politics are such that his people or her people are in charge on Capitol Hill, yeah that there would be no remedy for those who saw themselves above the law. That's exactly what I'm saying. I mean, the law ultimately is about what we the people allow to happen. You know, as a prosecutor, I only had power because there were police officers who would effectuate arrest warrants and judges who would sign orders that would put people in jail. But it took people to actually carry out those pieces of paper and make them real. And if Congress is not going to carry out the instructives of the Constitution, we don't have much chance. I mean, what Rep. Representative Amash said yesterday at his town hall, I think, was really instructive. That if Congress is not willing to at least look into a president of their own party and see if there's wrong doing, then it's really lost its, its bearings. And we have a real constitutional crisis on our hands. And the crisis isn't structural. It's personal. Alex Little, thank you. Thank you. So for the moment, put aside that part and focus, as Robert Mueller seemed to try to do today, on the matter of Russian interference. The Russians did interfere in our democracy. The Russians chose a candidate. The Russians tried to take down the opposition and the Russians meddled in our democracy. There were charges levied, and now it's in the courts. What exactly did the Russians do? And what are the Russians doing now? That's our report coming next.